Okay. So, I'm going to run through a platinum test route with commentary and uh, talk through what you need to do to pass a drive and test without drive, which is junction to park cars, etc. So, checking my mirrors, checking over my shoulder, put them in the car and going because it's a nice gap. Back up. So, I'm following this road down to the end. See, there's a lot of parked cars here, so I'm just slowing down because this ambulance is not moving over very much. And bring it out again, and again, slowing down to keep it in. So you can go past the parked cars, but the closer you get, the slower you need to go. So at the minute, because there's cars coming the other way, something like this van, so they've pulled out, so I need to slow down even more because this is a tight gap. And then end of the road, I'm going to go left. So keeping an eye out for pedestrians on this bit as well because they do like to cross on this section. It's not a crossing, but it is a place to cross. And if people have walked into the road, you need to let them keep going. Um, this lady's coming across and I move an excuse up. So I'm just gonna go, I'll leave the space. Now I've got space to move forwards. Got a nice gap to pull out of. And I'm gonna follow the road, which means going around to the left, which was marked as straight on, and I'll put my signal, as you can see there's people walking, they're going across a green light, so you do need to signal if it's beneficial, I'm going to take it off immediately because there's a junction there, now I need to move into the right lane, so I'm checking my mirrors, put my signal on, wait for this van, it's not looking, it's just looking at the person, but there you go, and we're going to go straight on, so again, watching out for people who just walk straight in front of you, because they do like to in this section, so I'm going really quite slowly, watching the people. And now we've got lots of parked cars. So again, you keep it slow. You shouldn't be getting too close to the parked cars. Looking for pedestrians, looking for people walking in between cars, looking for cars that are manoeuvring around, looking for people opening doors. So you've got to be scanning all of the cars all the way down the road the entire time you're driving down it. So this car's just dived into a space, but they're kind of stuck. So they're going to have to reverse around, but it hasn't affected me, which is good. Just open the door, give some space. And then end of the road, I'm going to go left. So as I come down, check my mirrors, get my signal. It's a split at the end with two lanes. One way, so if you're going straight or right, use the right side of the road. As it comes to the end, check both ways. Yeah, we're clear. At the traffic lights, I'm going to turn right. So on the approach, I'm checking my mirrors, putting my signal on, keeping on the lights because they might go. Uh, still good, still green. Uh, check and check my mirror, make sure no one's trying to overtake. Turn it to the road. There is a pothole there, so I'm going a little bit wider than I might otherwise. Try and avoid it as much as possible. Keep an eye on this because he's trying to turn over there. So you've got parked cars on that side of the road, which is fine for me to carry on going past. If this white trace ramp comes out, which is, I'm going to need to slow down and squeeze in a little bit. So, if you're going to go through a tight gap, you need to back it right off. Now I'm just speeding up, check my mirrors before I sped up, in case anybody got alongside. Now we've got parked cars, bringing it out. I've had a good look down the road. Again, look at all the different cars, make sure nobody's moving around. Look at the end of the car, check your mirrors as you pull in. I've got parked cars on the other side of the road. I need to be watching those cars, make sure nobody's coming around them. Check my mirrors, make sure nobody's coming around me. Now I'm going to say the next road on the right. So, mirrors, signal. This junction is a bit strange because the entrance is really small and it's a long way over to the other side of the, end, uh, the whole width of the road. So again, checking my mirror, so you can see how far over it is. So I'm just getting my wheels over it, but unfortunately, because there's a parked car, that's as far over as I can get. So I did get into the correct side of the road, but only just. Checking my mirrors, carrying on down the road. Glance again, so I'm just going to move over a touch. I'm not going to go all the way. And then glance again, so I'm going to get in the car there and left at the crossroads. So, check my mirrors, left signal. I wait just until after those parked cars. I don't want to look like I'm going to pull up in front of them. So, I bring it up. This bit of road you can't see until you get to the end, so there's no point wasting time trying to see around a bush that you can't see through. So, checking both ways once I'm here, it's clear. Again, just checking my mirrors when I come out to make sure there's nobody coming up fast. And I'm going to take the next road on the right. Signal, bring it into the correct side, 
looking into the road that I want to go into. There's a car coming up reasonably quick, I'm just going to wait. And again, checking into the road and checking my rear to make sure I know what's coming up behind. I've got a couple of cars, so I'm going straight around them, checking my mirrors as soon as I'm on the road, left at the end of the road. So, checking my mirrors again, signal. As I come up, I can see across the wall this time, so it's a better view, but I still can't go anywhere because there's a car coming. So, come to a stop, bring it out, avoid the massive pothole in this particular instance, I hit that one, and then carry on down the road, straight up to 30 miles an hour. And as I go along, I'm just checking my mirrors, make sure I know what's around me, looking for anybody that's crossing. It's really busy, lots of parked cars, but this road is really wide. As you come around here, you've just got to look across. Where the road is disappearing, you need to look as far around the corner as you can to make sure nobody's trying to cross, nobody's trying to pull out. So you've got the van over there that's trying to pull out. You might try and shoot out in a gap, and he is. And I'm just going to lift off a little bit because, yeah, it wasn't very quick pulling out. And then we carry on. Now I'm coming up to a bend. You can see there's a place where people can cross and then a bend. You can't really see through the bend because it's got a hedge. So I'm just going to check my mirrors, lift off. I'm not breaking, I'm just lifting off a little bit just so I've got good control if somebody was crossing or there was a, a car parked as I came around the corner. And then I carry on. This bit's wide open. I've got line of sight right across there. No problems at all with this bit. Some cars there that have driven in spaces that they might reverse out of, but it's okay. So I'm going to say next left, check my mirrors, left signal slowing it down. Keep a nice straight position. Need to make sure the entrance to the road is clear and the road I'm going into is clear. Yeah, it is. Always keep an arm of mirrors that turn in in case somebody's coming up to the left side. You might think that's impossible, but I can assure you it does happen. Especially with people on uh, like modified electric bicycles that seem to be able to go at about 40 miles an hour. And they come out of a junction and they'll come tearing up the pavement and then drive up on your inside. So be really careful. As we come up this bit, check my mirrors, our car slowing down and there is one coming. So I'm just gonna wait here. I'm gonna position, because there's a tree in the way. So I've just positioned so I can see past the tree. I'm putting my hand up and saying thank you. And just to be clear, you can put your hand up and say thank you. You can even take your hand off the steering wheel and say thank you. What you shouldn't do when we talk about waving is wave people across the road or wave people out of junctions. Check my mirrors again because that could encourage them to do something which they that might then lead them to drive into uh, oncoming traffic or try and cross the road when there's actually a car coming on the other side of it. So you have to make them let, uh, let, them, make, let them make their own minds up. Right, I'm going right at the end of the road, checking my mirrors. You can see that bit was really tight and awkward. you really got to be careful there because people turn into the junction. I've got a lovely big gap, so I'm going. And then we've got a parked car. Now this van stopped, but there was miles of space for him to drive past. I'm not really sure why he stopped. But the car is very badly parked. So carrying on down, keeping a good gap to these cars. Van coming towards me, you can see around about in front, another parked car, checking my mirrors, making sure I've got the space to go around the parked car, checking my mirrors to go in. You can see I do a lot of mirror checking. That's because I want to make sure there's no one there. So now I'm going to turn right. So checking my mirrors, putting my right signal on. Right on the mini roundabout. So as we come up to it, that car can go because there is a blocker going across. Now I can pull up. Now both cars are indicating that one's going that way. So straight after this white car I can go. There's nothing else coming. Checking my mirrors again. Again, because as I keep saying, you need to make sure there's no one there. If you don't check your mirrors and then there's a motorbike overtaking you and you turn into it, it's your fault. If you don't check your mirrors at a junction when you're turning right and somebody goes to go round you and you crash into them, it's your fault because you didn't check. Um, there might be mitigating circumstances that they were speeding, all sorts of other things, but essentially, if you turn into somebody without looking, then you are at fault. So carry on down the road. Again, I'm just easing off a little bit into the bend. I'm constantly looking for mirrors, making sure there's nothing there. And I'm going to take the next left. Checking around. 
and check in my mirror again. Looking into the road because this could be quite busy. And there's a man just stood in the middle of the road. He's gone now. Checking my mirrors, looking down the road. Keep an eye on the junction, so I'm coming out for the van, but there is a junction to my right and somebody could come up to that and pull out of it without really bothering to look. Again, checking my mirrors, because crossroads are always dangerous, people just drive straight across them without looking, especially during the summer season when there's a lot of holiday makers that don't know the roads. So carrying on down, at the end of the road I'm going to turn right, so I'll check my mirrors, have my right signal, I'll slow it down more than I ordinarily would in case someone turns in because of this parked car, I'll bring it back into the correct side, bring it up to the junction, I can't see anything until I get right to the end because of the fence and the hedge. And now I've checked and I can just creep a little bit and now bring it out. And then I'll ask myself to pull up on the left, because you will get asked to pull up on the left a number of times. So I'm checking my mirrors, looking for a nice spot. I'm going to pull up here, there's no one about, so I'm not going to indicate this bit of grass is in between two driveways. Pull up in a reasonable spot and stop. And then they'll say, move off when you're ready. So move off when you're ready my mirrors, check over my shoulder, double check there again, and then drive off. Check just to go through this, and then you might be asked to do a parallel park, so I'm just going to do it on this red car up here, so it'll ask you to pull up on the left, come to a stop, that explain to you that they want you to do a parallel park, it won't go through it all, and just going to double check all the way around, nice and clear, move off, bring it next to the car, no one about at all, in reverse, check around, full check, all mirrors at the back window, and bring it in, still checking around. straighten up and done finish the parallel park okay and I'll say move off when you're ready check round make sure there's nothing I'm going to indicate this time because I can't see I'm a little bit closer and we're all good and next road on the right please because this car's parked at the end of the junction where you shouldn't be parked it makes it incredibly difficult to turn in looking to make sure it's clear because if someone's coming down it they might drive right to the end and I won't be able to get around and there is a car coming so I need to position in my side of the road because they're not stopping check my mirrors again drive it up check again we're all good so carry on up so you can see if you drive the car correctly that's all you've got to do on the test it's a driving test Maneuver is incredibly quick and easy, as long as you know what you're doing and you've practiced. Um, and as you saw with that maneuver, I didn't try and line up a wing mirror or some sort of dot on the windscreen or anything else. Walk straight out then, checking my mirrors. I'm going to go right at the end of the road. I just did it by looking, which is where you should be if you're going for a test. Be able to reverse the car by looking at what you do. So, coming past this, lots of parked cars, that one's got its brake lights on, so I'm keeping an eye on it. As I come around the corner, again, I'm just checking every door as I go along in case anybody opens one. Looking at people on the pavement, I'm looking at the zebra crossing up there, making sure there's nobody either side of it. I can see people near it, so I'm just eating it off because most people walk and cross here, but they're not going to. And then carrying on. Cars just pulled out of the pub. It's driven straight out of the pub, right over the wrong side of the road towards the traffic, and then cut back in. So, who knows? Could have had a few pints. So, just keep an eye on them. Now they're turning right into that road. Got cars coming out either side. Now, this is not a point where you've got to leave some sort of gap to let people out because it wouldn't make any sense. There's cars coming the other direction, they can't get out anyway. It's only when you're in traffic. So, Checking my mirrors, I'm taking the next road on the right. This is a really tight, horrible road. Check, there's nothing coming. Check, the road is clear. 
So the first bit you can just about get into, but this section, if there's someone coming, it is so tight, you have to run slightly onto the white line and then it comes back in again, and now it's clear enough to get past. But if there's a big van or something, you might actually have to wait at that point, and you have got to judge the gap that you've got in front of you, even if it looks like you might be able to get past. So I'm slowing down slightly earlier here, in order that I keep seeing down the left side, and now I'm going past. This bit I can look through the corner. I can see there's nothing coming because again this is extremely tight and people often drive across the middle of the road here. It's also extremely pop-holed. So I'm not going massively quick through it because I don't want to smash through potholes really fast. Um, and this bit is extremely tight, so I'm just keeping it quite slow. And it does get slightly better here because they Built a new house in the state, which means that very slightly widen the road at that section, but not very much. And we are. So, yeah, if there are piles of things, you can slow down for them. Um, obviously. You know, it's either my car, your driving instructor's car, your own car. So massive potholes here, which I'm avoiding. So you don't want to do damage. If you keep smashing through potholes, you are going to cause excess wear and tear to suspension. You're going to damage tyres. Here's a massive couple of potholes there, which I'm going around. And it's clear just to move around them. It has been. I have heard of situations where people have been told not to slow down potholes or ask why they're slowing down and uh, I'll take the next lap so I'm just checking and as long as you're checking your mirrors and you're slowing down appropriately and you're avoiding those potholes it is perfectly acceptable and a much safer thing to do so right this road is slightly problematic so I'm just slowing right down because you used to be able to just get down it all the way and pass people, but the side of the road has disintegrated. Which means that you can't run off bits of it because there's sort of massive holes. Now this guy's waiting for the way to say thank you. You've got to be really careful with the shadows uh, and the light because you can't quite see where the potholes are. Now the problem is, is double. Basically the road used to actually be in good condition right to the edge, which it now isn't, it's sort of worn away, and that, uh, you can't really see it on the camera I doubt, but there are some parts if you drop your wheels off, you're going to end up scraping the bottom of the car on the floor. So check and mirrors for the zebra, uh, zebra, zebra crossing. And also they don't really cut the hedge back as far as they used to, so it has, it has become a sort of, uh, part of it is single track and part of it isn't, so you have to just sort of recognise what bit you're in. So I'm going to turn right, check my mirrors, right signal. Put it on, looking into the road. Again, keep an eye on the mirrors, don't want anybody to uh, come up alongside me. And I can carry straight on. So you can see in front of me, I've got a mini roundabout. So, glance at my mirrors, and I'm going to start slowing down. So as you come up to a mini roundabout, there's nothing coming, so I don't have to come to me, so I'm just going to slow it down. I'm going to run my right wheel across the edge of it, bring it back in, check my mirrors again, car behind me just straight line straight over the top of it, which is very problematic with mini roundabouts, because if you are slowing down and taking them reasonably, you don't have to give them a, like, a five foot wide berth when you go around the uh, white centre, um, but you slow down appropriately, but if other people just straight line them at speed, they don't work. Right, we've got a car coming up, so I'm checking my mirrors, slowing down, this is a bend, and yeah, we're good, bringing it out, check my mirrors, post office van, so I won't cut in too much because I can see that he was in it, and you never know, he might jump out of it. And then I'm going to carry on up to the end of the road, and I'm going to turn left. So looking ahead, we've got a park car this side, park van up there, so as I go up to the end of the road, check my mirrors, slow it down, I won't indicate left just yet, 
So I don't want it to look like I'm going to pull in behind the milk flow. Now I'm going to signal left as it comes to the end. So yeah, that one's going to go. As I'm coming up, because it's quite a wide open junction, I'm going to keep checking. So I can't go as I can't come in. The straight after this, there's nothing coming, nothing in that direction, completely clear to go. There is a parked van just here though. So I'm just going to check my mirror, slow it down, and get around that. So checking my mirror, slowing it down. What I'm doing, I'm watching what's coming towards me, make sure they're not indicating they're not. Go slightly to the left, run my wheel across the edge of the roundabout and back in. Again, check my mirrors to make sure nobody's come flying up behind straight line in the roundabout. Because of course, again, talking of motorbikes, a motorbike could go across that quite fast. Where you've slowed down, gone to the left, come back, they could straight line it and then be alongside you before you even realise that if you weren't just glancing in the mirrors. So coming up to another mini roundabout, checking rear, slowing down. And of course, every time you come to a mini roundabout, you need to realize what uh, side you've got to give priority to. So at the minute, it's the car from the right, but he can't move because the van's coming. So there we go. Although I was a little bit hesitant there because the car on the right actually did, he did slightly move and he looked like he was going to try and die out in front of the van and then he didn't. So you've got to keep an eye on it because even if you see the fact that you can go through, you need to be on the ball the entire time you're going through because if the car to your right suddenly decides to attempt to charge through at speed, you need to be ready to react. So when I approached that, I approached it slow enough that I could come to a nice neat stop if necessary. All right, I'm gonna say the next road on the right. So as we come up, you can't really see this road as you come up here. It's just on the sort of brow of a hill. And the Chapman mirrors have a right signal now because it's just coming into view. There is a sign back there that um, shows you there's a stagger crossroad. It's clear from head, clear into the road, and you've got to make sure it's clear in both. Too many people turn into a road and discover it's not clear, or there's a parked car, or whatever. And I think it's worth noting when I talk about checking mirrors, when driving normally you should be doing it for your benefit for your safety to protect yourself and when you're on a test you're doing it for the exact same reason it's not some special mirror technique that you have to use during a driving test where you have to move your head around looking at mirrors you look and glance in the mirrors just like you would under any normal circumstances when you're driving and can you wear sunglasses? Yes, you can. Driving test. Um, I mean, it's an incredibly bright and sunny day. I wouldn't be driving around without sunglasses. I think it would be far too bright. So make sure you're comfortable when you're taking your driving test and that you understand that it's down to an examiner to see that you're checking the mirrors, not for you to move your head around erratically to try and look like you're checking mirrors. You are actually doing it for a real purpose and a purpose that you should be doing the entire time you drive. From the moment you pass your test, and of course prior to passing the test when you're learning, right up until whenever you eventually stop driving. So I'm coming up to this roundabout. There's a massive gap, so I'm gonna drive straight into it, which was quite lucky because this roundabout is extremely busy today. And go left, I can hear sirens somewhere. Now there's a massive pothole coming up here so again I'm checking my mirrors I'm just going to move it out a little bit to avoid it. So just there. Carry on. They often ask you to do a pull up on the left here and that's a fire engine coming up so I shall carry on because a long way back there's a lot of cars to come past and See, I'm coming around the bend. That's a good opportunity, really, to make sure it's still coming. I don't know, it's a long way back, though. So, a good opportunity, really. So, it's just coming up behind me, but luckily, I'm just coming into the one way system. So, that helps me immensely. So, as I come into it, I'm just going to stay in the left lane, I'm going to slow it down, 
keep my brake lights on. I won't indicate, I'm just going to hold my foot hovering on the brake light so he knows I'm braking, he can see my brake lights. And then, now you see the car in front, they've come to a stop, they've got the hazard lights on. I don't know, are they stopping? Are they not stopping? Should I have driven around them? You've got to react in the correct way. You don't need to put your hazard lights on and swerve all over the road. And I'm going to assume it's because they were actually looking at something. Because now they're trying to pull up on the front here. But yeah, so with fire engine and stuff, you don't overreact essentially. So that fire engine was a long, long way back. I wasn't going to just stop just because it was in my mirrors because you've got to keep going to the point where they kind of catch you up and then try not to hold them up much because when people start stopping dead unnecessarily it holds up the thing with blue lights on whatever it might be you've got to try and find a place where they can pass you safely right on this roundabout I'm going to take the second exit which is to the right it's actually dead straight from the point I am but the roundabout is offset to the left so let's look I'm into it Nothing coming, but use the right lane, right signal, check the mirrors, left signal, because I'm making sure there is nobody to my left. And now we're coming back into the home run to the test centre. So just doing a little loop to go back in, which is what I do. So as we come along, again, you can see I'm over the white line because there's nothing coming the other way. I'm leaving space to the car. So check the mirrors, left signal. This is a tight junction, but the expectation is that you turn into this on the correct side of the road. If you overrun this junction, you're going to get a serious fault on a test because um, you shouldn't be overrunning it. So, uh, so yeah. there we go. Thank you. So I couldn't actually go forwards because the. Um, uh, thank you. And we're going to go left again this because the guy in the van, he did have space to move forward to let me get through the gap. He seems to be looking at something rather than the road ahead. So, put it now. Looking at, so at this point, I can see across the pavement, I can see there's nothing coming. Now I've got no vision, now I've got vision back again. So, as much as possible, I kept vision. Okay. And then left at the end of the road, and then that takes us back to the test centre. And the cars here are appallingly parked. So there is a woman who's just stepped out of the road, no, she's going to wait where she is, she's not going to come. She was just trying to get past the really very badly parked cars, I'm right on top of the junction. Okay, and then I'm pulling out again past the very badly parked cars and if you're on your driving test you will now come up to this you'll be asked to turn in there's a, uh, a big metal fence blocking it at the minute but that is the entrance into the uh, test centre so you turn in there and you just park up and that will be the end of your test so yeah in order to pass a test it's really quite straightforward you just got to drive the car correctly and by the time you go for your test you should be able to drive the car correctly it's not about learning test routes so although i'm showing you a test route it's an example of how to do it really more than anything but you should be driving everywhere you should be following sat navs following road signs you should be able to reverse into parking spaces and busy supermarkets um, and you should just be practicing everything that you need to do so that when you pass your test you're a solid confident driver i hope that helps <laughs>